Happy Easter! Good morning, Happy Easter! It is going to be such a great service together yes. today. If you're outside, come on in. If you're on the couch, yes. jump to your feet. Yes. Let's worship Let's God celebrate. together. Awesome. Let's celebrate. Something stirring, the earth is waiting, anticipating. Let God arise, revival is in the air. Can you feel it coming? Can you hear the sound like a mighty rushing wind from heaven? Wake up, oh sleeper, get out of God the grave, the door. Glorious grace, breathe in, exhale, salvation is near, alive in Jesus, not bound by the grave. Come on, put your hands together this morning. The breath of heaven, the Holy Spirit. His very presence alive within us with tongues of fire. We're prophesying, dry bones arise. Revival is in the air. Can you feel it coming? Can you hear the sound like a mighty rushing wind from heaven? Wake up, oh sleeper, get up. The door is breaking, glorious grace. Breathe in, exhale, salvation is here, alive in Jesus. When I'm bound by the grave. God is moving, He's moving. Our time is now. Oh, can you feel it coming? Can you hear the sound? Like a mighty rushing wind from heaven. Oh, wake up, oh sleeper. Get up.
most all of us would realize the significance of today. Today is such an important day that we remember that our God dealt with sin and death forever. And in that one move, when He, when he rose up from the dead, that means He won, full stop. It means that He has every victory. Whatever you're facing today, He has the victory for you today because what, what He has accomplished at that cross. So this is a new song. It's called Every Victory. And what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate that our God rules and reigns and that He indeed has every victory. You with me, church? Let's do this.
for joy. God, you're good. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. My God. Jesus has risen. Yep. He is risen indeed. I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they all told these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like seemed to them like nonsense. <laughs> Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Wow. Every victory is God's. Even death. Your suffering, your loss, your grief. He's all overcome by God's goodness. Every victory. Let's sing this together again. Every victory. Every victory. celebrated the fact that there was like this spectacular uh, redemption or, or like retreat, like yeah, resurrection, I mean, so re- spectacular um, retrieval of us, but today is all about the spectacular escape of God from even death itself, yes. showing that He has dominion over everything. How good is that? Who's in a good so mood this good. morning? I, I hope that your smiles yes. are just are not reflective of the fact that it's grey outside <laughs> or that it might be dark in your own heart, but, but or God Or you're wearing is face alive. coverings this morning. Yeah, that's right. That's Smile good. behind the mask. Smile behind the eyes. That's yeah. good. Awesome. Doing well? Happy Easter, everybody. Yes. And well, good morning to everybody watching, joining yep. us online this Easter Sunday. It's so good to have you. And praise God we're here in person. Oh, yeah. It could have Absolutely. gone either way this week, but we're here celebrating Jesus' victory yeah, over thank death. You Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. you, Lord. Awesome. Well, how about we pray together while we're standing up, while our hearts are engaged. I'd love us to pray this morning for, for people to know Jesus' power of his resurrection. Like Pastor Don's preaching a little bit later from Philippians on an incredible scripture that says, I just, I just long to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Who knows the power of his resurrection? Who knows that prayer is powerful and changes things? So 
who's experienced people getting healed before? Who's experienced people having like, like things just slot into place because God has orchestrated events? Like who's, who's experienced relationships coming together and forgiveness flowing? Let's pray for that to happen in, in a huge abundance today in the friends and family in our lives. Come on, let's pray. I want to stir your hearts. I want to hear your voices through the masks, over the, over the internet. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. where it feels like there is no way in every situation, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. God, sickness flees in the name of Jesus. Relationships are restored in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that your power flows through us. Holy Spirit, would you fill us this morning? Thank you, Father. God, we pray that just as you came back from the grave and you gave us new life and life abundantly, God, that our friends and our family would also know that new life. God, that our friends would believe today, our family would believe today that you are not just the creator, but God, you are our saviour and you are our Lord. My God, we pray that our friends and family would come to know you, would come to know the grace of God, the utter forgiveness of God, the kindness unlimited. My God, bless our friends and family with you this Easter. In Jesus' name, God, break into wherever they are. Fill their hearts with life. In Jesus' name. Everyone pray. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for our good God. guys can have a seat. Have a seat, everybody. So after the service today, for those in person, we have a yep. bag of hot cross buns and some Easter yep. eggs to give you. Yep. That'll Enjoy be fun. at home. We've got a, f- a couple of restrictions in place here in Queensland this morning. You know, we've got the face coverings on. We can't dance. No dancing. No so dancing. I've, I've been a bit too... Andy, settle down. <laughs> I've been a bit too, like, expressionate. I need to be a bit more like this. Is that okay? It's a shuffle. It's, it's a shuffle. It's I'm a not dancing, I'm just shuffling. <laughs> no? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, also free coffee uh, yeah. on the house as well. We'll go yeah. to Easter eggs and yeah. you can hang out and be yes. served an Easter egg. Yeah. And um, slot, yes. just, yeah. uh, they're small ones, so you can just slot them behind. Yes behind your mask. No, if you're, no. If you're having a coffee this morning, we do ask that you're seated. We should have done coffee meet, like during the service because then everyone could just keep drinking with their masks on. No? Loopholes. No. That's not, no, no, no. We're we don't sticking, do that. We're sticking to... No. Sticking. Jace, no. the COVID marshal is... Yeah, he's pointing fingers <laughs> at you. Let's <laughs> move along. Keep us on. Shall we? Okay, so um, we're going to give... Offer- Awesome, I yeah. will leave you to it. Thanks, babe. Thank um, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 has, and sorry, boys, in the Connect group, I'm skipping ahead. Forgive me, this is important. This, this makes a lot of sense for where we're going today. Um, for those of you who weren't aware, we, uh, my Connect group, we do a, a, a study on Romans. We're not quite up to where Romans 12 is next. So I'm, pr- I'm cramming here, I'm, pre- I'm preparing. But Romans 12, 1 says something so profound. It says, therefore, I urge you. And... And if you're wondering what he's saying, therefore, about it's all it's about Romans chapter one to eleven. It's this this huge portion of exquisite display of the gospel. It's just, it's incredible, and we've been loving unpacking this, and, and you should too. It says, therefore, I urge you, the most strongest language he could possibly consider, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. As living sacrifice. When he says offer your bodies, this is not just offer your flesh, but this is offer the entirety of your being. Offer every portion of yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I don't know if you've ever done something that you thought was absolutely incredible. You said something that was so hilarious 
maybe, and, 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 you, and you dropped it with perfect timing, but the person what, that you, you were saying it to, you, you dropped this joke to, just gave you like a mild giggle. You know, a feeling of like, I, that, that joke deserved you to be on the ground right now, just rolling in the dirt, just like in hysterics. Or, or you did something that was, was so clever I, I remember saying something as a kid that I thought was just so profound, and looking back, it really wasn't. I remember sitting there in the car with my parents and saying, look, just, I just dropped this, this grain of truth with them, and it was so, it was, it was like it came straight from heaven. So profound. And I remember they thought, they, caught, they, they, they were stunned, like, oh, that's good, Josh. feeling like just so discouraged that I thought I'd just done this like remarkable thing uh, or, or if you've, you've, you've done an act of service to somebody and, and they haven't really said thanks, yeah, that feeling is, it's a horrible feeling. Uh, I think this is what Paul's getting at when he's saying this, it's like in view of this great redemption, in view of this incredible escape, like have you really realized how remarkable the gospel is, how profoundly bizarre and surprising, how it, it tops any movie that you'd ever, any movie storyline that you'd ever be able to even imagine or see. God has done something that has never been done before and never will be done again. The story is so unique and so wonderful that Paul's saying, I urge you, don't give a mild response. Don't half-heartedly say yay. Don't just smile when you feel like you should. But offer your, in, the entirety of your being. The only, the only response, Paul says in this moment, is to say to God, that's it. I'm all yours. That's it. You've just done, you, you've just, I, nothing can beat this. I don't have to reserve myself for, for, for something that could top this. I'm just all in on this. And I want us to have that heart today that says, God, I am overwhelmed by what you have done in our lives, in, in my life, how you've taken me from death to life, how you've given me hope, how you've given me purpose, how you've caused me to find some freedom, how you've empowered me to make a difference, how you've given me yourself and given me life eternal. Wow. And say to, say to yourself then, uh, uh, with that overwhelmed heart, what can I give? Like what would be proportionate to that? And the only answer is everything. It is to say, because you have blessed us with everything, we bless you with everything. So when we come, we come with that heart today to give. We give of our tithes and our offerings to God. We give our lives in service to one another and to Him. We, we give of all of our lives in love because it's the only response to His absolute overwhelming goodness. God has done so much for you. And He's not sitting there like a, a cranky person saying, just say thank you. But He's anticipating that as you open the gift of the, of the wrapping of grace today, that you would be so delighted that you'd run to Him and that you'd give of your life to Him today. Why don't we close our eyes as we consider our giving today, giving our, consider our lives as gifts today. Lord Jesus, we thank You so much that You gave it all in hope that we would respond in kind thank you so much that you consider our needs, that you look after us at every moment, that you know what we need and you're ready to give. God, we thank you so much, Lord Jesus, that you've armed us with, with the ability to give. God, I pray that you bless the church today, everyone who's online and everyone who's here, to, to, to fill their buckets up with plenty that they can overflow into one another's lives they can do your work and make a great difference on this world bless them in Jesus name Amen
Be blessed as you give, church. If you want to give as well, you can give uh, digitally online. And the ushers will come around with buckets now as well. You want to use those. Hey, next, next week, we're starting a brand new series. We're going to put the verve back into people's relationships. And we, uh, we have a series called The Bitter Sweet Symphony. And it is going to be amazing. So it's a four-week series on relationships, on causing your relationships to just come alive. I want to put some, some, some thriving back in your life. Who would love that? Who would love to take their relationships up a notch, cause their friendships to be friendlier, their marriage to be marriage I want to put some love back into your life. It's going to be amazing. So uh, preaching next week. So starting off, we're starting off with a, a, a uh, an, I was going to say an episode uh, called, <laughs> called Echoes. It's talking about generational echoes. We're going to talk about vulnerability. We're going to talk about forgiveness. We're going to uh, look at pride. And it is going to be, um, going to be life-changing for you and for those of you who are watching. So, so I'd say thank you so much for all of you who are sending links um, to our YouTube channel, to our live stream, to your friends. What an easy way of including people in the service that is. Just say, hey, if you want to come to the service, like it may be a lot for you to come in the building, but here's a link so you can see what it's all about. We're not a, cra- we're not a bunch of crazy weirdos. We just love Jesus a lot. And um, so send the link to your friends, but be here in person as well. It is going to be an amazing series. So, yeah. But hey, who's ready for Pastor Don to preach this morning? I know I am. And uh, we're going to jump to our feet right now and prepare our hearts in this next song uh, to hear the Word of God together. Come on. to share with you this message of Jesus and the incredible significance of his resurrection from the dead. What an amazing thing is that 
is that we're here celebrating some of us on the Gold Coast, some of us in homes, some of us in various parts of the world, in England, in Denver, the Spirit of God celebrating with you that Jesus has risen from the dead. <laughs> yeah! Whoa! He's alive! And in His resurrection is our hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Wonderful. Thank you, team. Thank you so much for your help here today to bring us into the presence of God. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your help here today, bringing us into the presence of God. And thank you to the whole team who have, who have made this service possible, from the data projection team to the people helping us with our online, to people with the catering, the people with the welcoming. You know, this week's been a crazy week, for those of you who don't know, that, uh, that uh, we, we were on Tuesday going, is this service allowed to happen? Is it not allowed to happen? Can we or can't we? And so we've prepared for two eventualities. And, 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 but he, here we are celebrating celebrating together the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. It, it is such a beautiful thing. To, to give us context to this, to this message today, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. I've got a number of Bible verses today that I'm anchoring the Scripture in because I, I, I want you to get a hold of that this, this is not just a good idea, this is not just someone's intelligent idea, this is just not someone's communication, this is based upon the Word of God and it is His Word that transforms our life, that is His Word that has echoed throughout eternity for 2,000 years and has been in the business of enabling people to experience the resurrection power of Jesus in their personal world. And so that, that's what I'm on to here, I want you to experience the resurrection power of God in your world today. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, All praise to God, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. If you have been born again, this is God's mercy that this has happened for you. His free gift, this is His free gift for you. And I, I want you to help me here today. If, you, if you're at home, uh, put some comments in the, in the, in the chat box and, and uh, big, big shout out to those who have been doing that already. Max and Sharon, we love you guys and praying the healing power of God upon your physical bodies and, and that you'll be resurrected. But how good it is you can, you can engage with our service here online. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is such an awesome thing. Such an awesome thing. Yeah. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we've been born again. We, this is we, we because God has raised Jesus from the dead. That's the because, because God has raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> and now we live with great expectation. I'm praying there's great expectation in your spirit. Once you close your eyes a minute and say, Jesus, put great expectation in my spirit. Jesus, put great expectation in my spirit. And, and uh, let, let, let that be true for you today. Here's, here's the Bible verse I want you to write down as well. This is Philippians 3.10. This is the one, this is the anchor for my message today. It says, I want to know Christ. Would you read this after me? I want to know Christ. And experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. <laughs> in, in the past four, four weeks, we've been, we've been on a series of the Jesus way, and, and it's about knowing Christ. It is about finding freedom. It is about discovering purpose, and it is about making a difference. And if you've just joined us, we're so glad you're here. But jump on, jump on YouTube and look at these last four, and that'll help you to fill in some of the, some of the blanks that uh, you're going, hang on, what about that and what about this? Well, you'll go back and you'll, you'll find out, and, you'll, and it will help you. But he, he, here today, here's Paul. Here's Paul right at the beginning of this Bible verse saying, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. This, this, is, this is a learned man. This is not just, not just someone who's, who's uh, like Peter or, or James or John, fisherman. This is a man who's been through the most prestigious education process in the, in, in, at that time. He's, he's had a purebred uh, breeding. Uh, he's from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Pharisee. 
he, 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 was, he was obedient to the law to its fullest extent. E- even with a passion in his heart to see those who call themselves Christians killed. And, and so, so he went to great lengths to persecute Christians. He was without fault according to the law. And this, this, guy, this guy says, says, that didn't do me any good. No matter how hard I tried, I, it still didn't help me to know God. No matter how religious I was, it didn't help me to know God. No, 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 matter, no matter what the external was happening in my life, it didn't make me know God. He, he, he at this point in time of his life, in his older age, is saying, I, I, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. Is, what's your ambition? Do you want to know Christ? Because it's in knowing Christ, it's in knowing Christ, it's in knowing Christ you begin to experience eternal life through having faith in Him. If you take a mouse and you put it in a bread bag, it doesn't make it a loaf of bread. It just contaminates the bread. But that's not the point of the story. You take a cat and you put it in a car garage, it doesn't make it a car. Our cat loves walking in through the garage, but it has not once turned into a car. You take a person and you put them into a church, it doesn't make them a Christian. John Wesley, one of my heroes of the faith, about 1,700 years after Paul wrote this, I want to know Christ and, and how education didn't help him know God and how trying to be a good person didn't help him know God. The externals didn't make him know God. Being religious didn't help him know God. John, John Wesley talked about, he preached this message and he said, he said, well, the almost Christian is a really good bloke. And in fact, you really want to know him because the almost, the almost Christian is really kind and, and, he's, and he's a great dad and, 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 he, and, he's, and he's kind to his neighbours, and he helps them out when they're in need. But th- this, this is the almost Christian, says, says Wesley. It, all, all, all those things re- really are not going to help you to know God. Not, knowing God is about, says Wesley, it's about loving Him. Actually about really loving Him. So what does it mean to know God? Not knowing God is about a relationship. It's about where you call his name and he calls your name. In uh, Facebook, those of you who are on Facebook, there's about 5,000 people who say they know me. <laughs> there's quite a number of them I know, actually have phone numbers for, or actually have talked with, but it's not 5,000. In, in our world, we, we use the word know and know in, in, different, in different ways. Do, do you know God? Like, is He your intimate friend? That, that's what this means. Paul says, I want to know Christ. In other words, I want Him to call my name and I want to call His name. I want to walk with Him and talk with Him. I want to hang out with Him. I want to be His friend. I want to engage with Him. I, I want to walk through life with Him. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. He, he goes on to, to explain, explain some more in this about what knowing Christ is. He, and he, and, he, and he, he says, he says uh, I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. So the big question you ask yourself today is, do I, do I know God? Do I want to know him? Yeah, I want to know him. How, how, how can I know him? I can experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. All of us, all of us have areas of our life that are like smelly <laughs> and need to get cleaned up. And, and that's the incredible thing about, about the death of Jesus on the cross is, is that he died for our iniquities. What, what's, what's that? Our, our moral shortcomings, our, our failures, our, our sin, the th- th- things that are not right in our life. 
in spite of being a good bloke or a good person or a great mum or, or a good friend, that, that there's stuff in our life that we just fall short of God's expectations for us. He died on the cross, that all that stuff would be just completely washed away. And, and we can stand before God and, and know, I'm completely forgiven. All, all, all that stuff is washed clean. The most overwhelming sensation I can recall is that moment when I put my hand up and said, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. And praying the prayer, Jesus, come into my life, and knowing that he'd come in at that moment, I, I, the overwhelming sensation was I felt clean. I, I'd just been washed clean. I want to experience the resurrection power of Jesus. I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Are there areas of your life where you need the resurrection power to wash you clean? To transform something? To set you free of, of something that's like gripping your life and you can't, you can't get free of that grip? An attitude, a thought, or a, or, or a broken relationship, or a behavior? The resurrection power of God can transform your life. It transforms my life. And it's not just something then, it's something here, now, today. The resurrection power of God. I want to know, I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. This is, this is Paul saying, I want to experience this when? Now. Why don't you say this with me? I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. That raised him from the dead. That mighty power. God let that mighty power work in my life. I want to continually be transformed more and more into your, into your image. So question for you today. Where do you need to experience the mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead? If there's an area of your life, go, oh, gee, that, ooh, ah, ouch. You, I, I don't need to condemn you. I, that, we, we condemn ourselves too much. But I want to tell you here today, you can experience the resurrection power of Jesus in your life. That there's nothing he can't set you free from. There's nothing he, that grips your life that he cannot transform. Come on. Would you reach out to him today? God, transform my life. God, transform my life. His, his, uh, so so, we, so we, know, we know Christ. And, and how do we get to know him? Well, praying a prayer, that's how you get to know him. Like, that's how you get to know someone. You start talking to him. <laughs> you start hanging out with him. Say, I'm coming over. I'm, I'm, let, let's get together. That's, that's how you get to know Jesus. And, and you get to know him. You start to find, find freedom be, because you're experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus in your life. Here, here's, here's the third thing, and this is really unpopular today. I want to suffer with him and share in his death. In, in our world where it's so popular to go, what about me and my rights? And, and, and there's, some, there's some important parts of that. But please, we must not negate the reality of this. I want to suffer with him. If you want to know Christ, the Bible tells us, if you want to come after Jesus, pick up your cross to follow me. You want to come after Jesus? You've got to pick up your cross. What is a cross? Well, it's a thing you die on. It's not just the gold thing you wear around your neck. <laughs> I, I, I want to I die to me and live for Christ. It, let me help you to understand this. Romans 6, 5, it's talking about baptism. And it says, since we have been united with him in his death, united with him in his death, this is about I want to die with him, we will also be raised to life as he was. And we know that our old selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. If you're battling with the power of sin in your life, you've got to die to yourself. Does, does, does it make sense? Can you hear that? It's like, like there's, there's no shortcut. You, you, you want to get rid of sin? Well, die to it. Stop it. Kill it. <laughs> Don't keep doing it. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, but, but it's in the death of Jesus, as we identify with him, we, oh, who do I identify as? Will I, will I identify with Jesus? <laughs> That's another story. 
I want to, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Martin Luther, Martin Luther, the famous guy who had a huge impact on the Reformation, when, when he was battling with, with sin in his life, you know, that is an old habit, a, a, a thing that was gripping his life and, and, and it was controlling him and he, couldn't, and he couldn't get mastery over it. He would turn around to the sin and say, Sin, you died at my baptism. Get back in the grave. <laughs> so I was crucified with Christ. And, and may, maybe you'd never been baptized. Got to do that because that's about dying to self it's more than just getting wet. It's about dying to self and rising to new life in Jesus. It's about going under the water, buried and resurrected to, to eternal life. It's about living for Christ. Mark 8, I mentioned this a moment ago. Write this one down too. Mark 8, 34 says, Then calling the crowd to join his disciples. Come on, you want to be a disciple of Jesus? Here, this is how you do it. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, if anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. Are you sharing in his death? That's the question today. Are you sharing in his death? Are you sharing in his death? Are you going, okay, Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I want to know Christ. I want to experience the resurrection power. The mighty power that raised him from the dead. God, there's parts of my life that need, that need resurrection. I, there's parts of my life that need washing clean. There's parts of my life that need transforming. And I, I God, God, I, the, I, I, today, today I, I want to die to my old self and I want to live for you. I want to live for you, Jesus. I want to live for you. Are you sharing in his death? There ain't no shortcut. There ain't no shortcut. Because, because, <laughs> Because this is how it works. <laughs> the, the verse 11. Verse 11. This, this, is, this is Paul's ambition. So that in one way or another, I will experience the resurrection of the dead. What does he want to do? He wants to experience the resurrection of the dead. Only dead things get resurrected. That's how it works. Only dead things get resurrected. How, how, how could Jesus get raised from the dead? Well, he had to die. Had to be dead. And so so you, you mean it's okay that I might go, Jesus, I want to die to myself and live for you? More than okay. It's like, that's the way. <laughs> Die to self and live for Christ. Die to myself and live for Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. And I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Live for a cause that's worth dying for. And, and so that in one way or another, I will experience the mighty resurrection of the dead. <sighs> what a difference you make. As you die to self, and the resurrection power of God comes into your life. Do you know that one day, one day there's going to be a literal resurrection of the dead? That, that, that's, that's going to be pretty weird. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Us, with Jesus, and with all the people who love him, right around this globe, people in Papua New Guinea, Singapore, Indonesia, <laughs> right, right around this globe, people loving Jesus, being resurrected, populating heaven, celebrating with him for eternity. I, I want to make a difference in this. Yeah? Yeah. So do you, do you want to know Christ? Why don't we stand for a moment in the presence of God here today as we're celebrating Easter. Can we, can we stand together? I want to ask you a question. This is a moment to do some housekeeping with God. And, and I've, I've talked about knowing God. 
And, and may, maybe in, in this service today or, or at home you're going, well, I, I, I know about God, but I really don't know Him. And, and, I'm, and, I, and I fit, fit like, like Wesley talked about, well, the almost Christian, I'm a pretty good bloke, I'm a pretty good person, but I really don't know Christ inside. I want to know Him today. Would you pray this prayer with me? Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to lead you in that prayer. And, 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 if, and if you're away from God, would you, would you come back into a relationship with Him? If you found that you've, your heart's gone hard and cold and, oh, you know, your circumstances and may, maybe the, the stuff of life that has just got a hold of you, come back to Him today. Come back into a relationship. Jesus, come back into my life. I'm going to give my life afresh to you. I want you to know Christ. I want you to know Christ today. I'm going to lead us in a prayer and I'm going to ask you to say, yeah, this is me. I'm praying this prayer today. And if you're at home, would you, would you, would you let us know? Would you, would you click the button, raise a hand or send us a message to hello at c3rubina.org.au and, and tell us because we want to help you in your relationship with God. Let's, let's, let's pray, this, pray this prayer together about knowing God. Dear God in heaven, I thank you for Jesus, that he died on the cross for me. God, I'm amazed that you give your son that I can live. Thank you. I ask you to wash me clean and make me new. Forgive me my sin and set me free from its power. Jesus, I welcome you into my life. And Father, I thank you that today you call me your child and you welcome me into your family. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, give me strength to live for Jesus every day. His eyes are closed here right now and people are still if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you're praying that coming back into a relationship with God or, or coming to know for sure that you're a child of God as people have got their eyes closed, would you raise your hand and say, yeah, this is me. I prayed this prayer today. I'm, I, I, I want this to be true for me today. This is you. Would you simply just show me and say, yeah, this is me. I, I'm, I'm doing this today. My Father, I thank you. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for people making new connections with God. I thank you, Father, for people coming into relationship with you for the first time. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I want to know Christ. And experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him. Sharing in his death. So that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection of the dead. In Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is that worth thanking him about? Yeah. Thank him. Thank him. Yeah, thank you, God. Beautiful. <laughs> and thank you, Pastor Don. Yeah. Put your hands together, Pastor Don. Thank you, thank Pastor you so Don. much. What a great message. So encouraging. Oh, Hey, we, uh, we hope that over the next week that you find yourself knowing God more, finding a deeper sense of freedom, His, His resurrection power in your life. 
and, uh, and you go about making a difference in other people's lives. The, the, the goal of this, the whole point of this is that people would know Jesus. So I'd love us to, to leave this place today, not only seeking God, but seeking others to find Him as well. Let's, let's do that. Let's live our lives on mission this week. Let's live our lives making a difference, bringing people to know Jesus. So good. Yeah. Beautiful. And see you next week. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, you guys online. Oh, there's a bunch of you on there. It's been so cool seeing, seeing the chatter happening. So awesome. good. You guys hey. have a brilliant Easter. Be blessed. Happy Easter. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.